So last time I showed you how to take the arms from Ravager Thor and combine them with regular Love and Thunder Thor. And today I'm gonna to show you how to actually take the gauntlets and also swap them over. So that way you can take these two guys and turn them into this one. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to how to do it. So with the gauntlets, uh, I've been uh, talking to a few people. I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of thinking about how best that this can work. And so let's start with what we know. What we do know is that the gauntlets are part of the uh, part of the forearm. And so you can kind of see how there's a bit of a shadow in there. And if you look, you can kind of see that I can kind of tug up on it and that the rest of it kind of moves. The other thing that we know is that if you can see it, you can kind of see that ring in there, which is a little bit different than how it looks on a normal arm. And so I believe that ring means that it's kind of fused together. So I'm gonna show you on the regular arm that we already swapped, that there is no ring like that. And so what I think what we need to do uh, first is to try to heat it up and uh, pull. That was one suggestion that was given to me that uh, I saw and somebody said that it should just work after heating up and uh, pulling and then heating and pulling. And so I've already got boiling hot water right next to me and we're just gonna go, to go at it. Okay, so I just tried uh, taking off the gauntlet from Thor's uh, Love and Thunder arm uh, using heat, just using boiling water. I was told that I should be able to dip it in and rock it back and forth and then dip it in, rock it back and forth and eventually it should come out. That, at least for mine, did not appear to be true. Here's what ended up happening. So I tried that, didn't work, so then I took some trimmers and I tried uh, cutting out because I believed that the that you can kind of see that there's a circle in there which I thought maybe meant that it was fused together at that part. And that once you kind of uh, cut that out, that that would just pop out. That didn't happen. Eventually, I trimmed around and then I went from the, the inside, <clears throat> went in from the inside, and then that eventually got me down to this. And so if you can see it, you can kind of see how there's a flat side in there, but it doesn't appear to have any kind of adhesive against it. You see that lighter white part is where this broke off of. And so um, what that means to me though, is that these were, uh, these are clearly uh, never meant to come apart and never designed in the way that I thought, because I, I did obviously get this, you know, the whole uh, trimmed out of it uh, where the hand sits um, but even if you look inside it, you can't see from the other side through so that was never gonna work so here's here's what I'm gonna do in an effort to make this as easy as possible for any person I'm gonna use a soldering iron so I know a lot of people will say that uh, I should be using a Dremel instead or a rotary tool which should work as well however for any newcomers uh, working with something that's uh, working at high speed uh, they you know you might mess it up and you might uh, drill a hole through or go in the wrong direction but using a soldering iron uh, while also a little bit scary you're working with heat but it's not moving at high speeds and you'll be able to slowly melt uh, and get to where you need to go so I'll link a recommended soldering iron in the uh, description I'm using a Radio Shack one which obviously you can't get any more um, but most soldering iron should be fine i would recommend something that's not super high temp uh, just because you don't need a really high temp when it comes to soldering irons in terms of melting plastic uh, on top of all that using a soldering iron is not meant to melt plastic and so with that in mind be careful of the fumes that will come out uh, as you're melting i am going to do my best so i'm just going to go straight in And you can see all those nice fumes. And now you can actually even see, you can kind of see the hole through there already. So I'm gonna just, let's 
see it from the other side too. So you can see I made that hole now, but again, we're gonna have to make it quite a bit bigger since that was never really meant to, to be the whole way through. So the other thing that we have to consider in mind as well is that our intention is to slip this guy over this wrist. And obviously these two are already kind of the same size. So we're gonna need to get more out of this so that this can slip on a little bit more easily. Let's see if I can do it at an angle that you can kind of see. And then so can I. So I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna go kind of quick because I don't wanna uh, accidentally melt through anything that I didn't intend to melt. And anytime I do use a soldering iron to melt plastic, I try to uh, breathe outward in order to push the fumes away as well as to ensure that I'm not breathing in the fumes. This is just a wet wipe but there are proper soldering materials that you can use to wipe off uh, when you've got stuff heated up on it. All right, I'm just gonna go from the other end now. The other thing to consider when you're using a, a soldering iron is that the whole thing is hot, not just the tip. So if you were to get in there and then angle it like this, you could end up melting that part of it. So keep that in mind if you are gonna use this. And it is hot. Um, as I got closer to the edge, I could feel the heat on my fingers, and it is hot for sure. So be careful. If you have uh, heat-resistant gloves, I would recommend using that. So at this point, this is what it looks like. And for comparison's sake, let's show you the other arm. Here's how it looks currently. So right now, you can see I have a straight hole through. That's not bad. However, because the arm is tapered, I want to get just a little bit more out on this side of it so that it's a little bit more angled like that, the same way that the arm is. And again, be careful if you're going to follow the same method that you don't um, accidentally melt it against the, the shaft of the soldering iron and, and that you only use the tip because it was very possible that I was gonna get in there and then start going around to try to get the edge and I was gonna bump up right against the gauntlet and then melt part of it and that would have been a huge bummer. At this point what I want to try is to actually put the two pieces together. So I am going to again use boiling water and then I'm actually gonna heat up both parts and then see if I can just kind of get them to slip on together. So here we go. So that's not gonna quite fit. Um, this is still too big and there's still not enough taken out of here. However, I don't wanna take any more out of here uh, due to you know risking of taking too much out and it becoming a problem. So what we'll do instead is we'll do the same process but now to here. And again, this is a destructive process, so if this is not something you want to do, then consider that before uh, taking the first step. So uh, what I'm going to do is, because you can kind of see how it comes out like that, I want to uh, bring it more uh, tapered inward like that, and we'll see if that helps. And then I guess we'll keep in mind that, like that. So here's the arm after we've used uh, nippers to trim it down. And here's a the non-trimmed one as a comparison. And we'll see if that fits any better. Okay, <laughs> so at this point, with as much as I've cut off, um, this will hopefully fit a lot better. Okay, here we go. It's in, it's on, we are almost there. So, uh, 
we just did a lot of trimming. We, we used a lot of um, heat from the soldering iron, but I think um, we should maybe try something a little bit different. So I think we should go ahead and try using a Dremel because it should go uh, quite a bit faster. Okay, so we, uh, we completed our first arm and we're gonna work on the second one. And like I said, instead of using uh, a soldering iron, we're actually gonna go ahead and try using a, uh, a Dremel instead. And a Dremel is just a, a brand of rotary tool. There are other brands, uh, but the Dremel is so common that it's, uh, it's what people use, sort of like how Kleenex is a brand, but that's what a lot of people use to refer to as tissues, right? So I have a, um, a head that is meant for cutting tile. Uh, this isn't the only one that'll work. Uh, most uh, heads that are like this should work for what I'm going to attempt. And so I'm gonna start with low speed and then uh, we'll see how it goes. So again, uh, my plan is to go through uh, this side in order to get through far enough to break this piece off of the rest of it. You wanna keep in mind that um, that it can still get hot enough to melt. So just be careful. And you don't wanna go at the highest speeds as you can, just because the, the higher speeds uh, make it that much easier to get out of control. So we wanna always maintain as much control as we can with this. I'm gonna go a little bit faster now. So I am going to keep uh, going in and I'm gonna go around uh, since I have to widen the hole anyway. So hopefully it'll be a two birds, one stone kind of situation. And just so you can see, I'm not going at full speed. Full speed would be all the way down here. You know what it is? It's that same last bit right here that's holding on. So I'm gonna try to see if I can go in on the top side and just cut it off. So cut off more of the other piece that I intended to, but that's okay. Because what we can do is we can just use the Dremel to kind of finish this out. Now, again, be really careful with this because now that you're dealing with a smaller piece, it's easy for it to just kind of jump out of your hand. Um, so you want to hold this carefully, hold both pieces carefully, one in each hand, and then again, not. Uh, I don't recommend going on the highest speed, so that you have as much control as you can possibly have. And obviously this method is way, way more messy than the other method, but it's also quite a bit faster. So I've jumbled out what I think is probably the appropriate amount um, or what I feel comfortable with doing uh, without feeling like I'm gonna mess up and really destroy something. So I'm gonna go ahead and try test fitting it as is, and we'll see if I have to trim down this arm also. I assume I will. Let's hope for the best. Yeah, definitely gonna have to trim down. So, just to show you, without trimming down, what happens then is that it kind of bulges up. And that's because of the way that is. So I am going to 
use the Dremel again on Thor's arm. And I think I'm gonna use a bit of tape just to tape off uh, where I want to uh, stop myself from going past. So the plan is to cut basically all that down. Thor's flesh everywhere. And if anything, to be honest, I think uh, the Dremel was great for the gauntlet, but for the forearm, I would probably just use nippers like I'm doing now. That was uh, more work than it was worth to, to use the Dremel on the, uh, the forearms. I'm going on as smooth as I want. I think I need to taper the arms in a little bit more. So I'm just gonna trim. Gauntlet on. You can see our hand uh, wrist peg is still there. And let's throw a hand on. Fully Love and Thunder Thor. Uh, well, based on a combination of Ravager Thor and the Thor that we have uh, available to us. And that's it. So. Um, I've shown you how to do it with two different methods, one being a Dremel uh, or rotary tool, one being a soldering iron. Uh, both obviously uh, can make it work, uh, but it really comes down to what your personal preference is going to be. I think that the, the, the Dremel is easier, but I think is generally for a more advanced uh, person or modder. And then I think that the uh, the soldering iron w will be a little bit easier for first time uh, people trying to do something like this. Most of these techniques are applicable to most other mods. So once you know how to do this, then you should be able to do a lot of other stuff too. But if you have any particular uh, mods that you'd like to see other figures, whether it's Marvel Legends or DC Multiverse or any other number of uh, figures that are out there, let me know. Uh, I'd like to see if I can figure it out and show you how to do it on camera. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the comments.